Today we're going to talk about movements with rigid transformations and sequencing of moves. So sometimes you'll hear this called mapping and this first problem is kind of exploratory so we're going to talk about this one. So Andre performs a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation of polygon P, so here's polygon P, and gets polygon P prime. But he does not say what the center of rotation is. Can you find the center? So if we use our patty paper or you can use some other type of um, transfer paper, tissue paper, so forth we talked about before, we're just going to kind of make a little um, mark of our shape. So we're going to kind of go over our shape. Let me use a pencil here. We're going to go over our shape. It's pretty dark so we can see it well. And of course we're going to label it P. So what we're trying to do is we're going counterclockwise. So remember counterclockwise goes backwards. So we want to be able to turn this 90 degrees to get it to line up here. But we want to know what point we have to go around. So if we take our pencil and put it somewhere, let's say maybe we were going around this point. We're going to turn it 90 degrees and see. So that's one rotation. Well, one rotation gets us here. And we need to get there and move up. And we're just doing a rotation. So let's try some other points. So let's see, maybe we do it here. And we rotate it one turn. Well, it's a little bit too far over. So let's go back. Maybe we try here. A little too far up. So maybe we go down and try in the middle. Oh, we got closer, but we still need to come down. So maybe we can go one over here. And we rotate 90 degrees. It lines up perfectly. So our point is right here between them. So if we pay attention to what we're actually doing, we're going around a point. We don't have an origin. We're not really sure what point. But if we'll notice where this point is. So let's say we have these points here are corresponding. When we think about what's corresponding, if we have a point here and then rotate this point here corresponds here. These two points correspond. So we can think about this one as point A and A prime. So let's look at how those points are corresponding, how they relate to our rotation point, our center of rotation. So notice that we're one, two away here and one, two away here. So if we think about this as a 90 degrees, if we think about what we're doing here, 90 degrees is a quarter turn, it's the same distance away when it rotated from point to point. So we found that our point was here. So in sequencing, we have to make sure that um, our order matters because that can be a big difference. So we're going to look at number one here in your practice sheet and we have a trapezoid A in the coordinate plane. And it says to draw polygon B, which will be the image of A, using the y-axis as a line of reflection. So I'm going to highlight my y-axis so we make sure we know what we're doing. So when we're talking about reflection, we've got to think about going across. And every point has to be done. So we're going to take this point and we're going to cross A. And so we're going to look at each point here. So this is two away. So that means this point has to be two away. This one here is two away, so we have to have a point here two away. This point here is four away, so this one has to be four away. And this one here is also four away, so we're going to be four away. Then we can connect our points, all of them here. And now this is a reflection across the y-axis, and we're going to label this B. So the same thing if we use our patty paper, we could use the same way, we could trace over A, and we know that when we reflect over, it's two away, it's like a mirror, and we come straight over two away with Y as our midline point, our inflection point. Now we're going to take and draw polygon C the image of B, so we're taking B and going to make C using the X-axis as the line of reflection. 
So let's use a different highlighter. We'll highlight the x-axis so we know what we're doing. And now this time we're going to take this B shape and we're going to go over the x-axis to make the polygon C. So this is one away, so one away. And this is two long, so we can count one, two. Or we could count this is three away and this is three away. Same thing here, one away, one away. And this is three long, so one, two, three, which is also four away, and then connect. So this is now polygon C. Now it says draw a polygon D using the image of C using the X axis as a line of reflection. Well, if we think what we did here, we had C down here, and we're going to use the x-axis. If we flip that over on the x-axis, we get right back to B. So B also is D. Now, the number two here, the point negative 4, 1 is rotated 180 degrees counterclockwise using the center negative three zero. So we're not using the center of zero zero right now, we're using negative three zero. What are the coordinates of the image? So let's use our previous graph and help us with this. So negative four one, so we're gonna put a spot at negative four one, that's actually this spot right here. And we're going to rotate it 180 degrees around the center that's negative three, zero. So negative three, zero is right here. So this is gonna be our spin point. So I'm gonna use that spin point. We'll use our patty paper we've already used here. I'll draw back over this on this side so we can see it. So we're taking this point right here and we're going to rotate 180 degrees counterclockwise. So the clock, remember, travels this way. We're going to rotate it counterclockwise. And I'm going to make a little mark there so I can clearly see my spot. And I'm going to go two full rotations. There's 90 and 180. So my point would end up here when I'm finished. So let's see what that point is. So I'm going to end up right here. And that point is negative 2, negative 1. So I know that C is my answer, negative 2, negative 1. So patty paper is very helpful when you're going somewhere different besides around the origin. All right, let's look at number 3. So this time we're going to describe a sequence of transformations for which triangle B is the image of triangle A. So this is our pre-image and B is our image that we created. So we changed from A and we went to B. So how did we do that? So again, we're gonna use our patty paper to help us. So I'm gonna draw our little orientation line here just to give us, we may or may not need it, we'll see. Um, and then I'm gonna trace over A. So I want to know, what did I do to get A over here on top of B? Now I can see if I just do a translation, a slide, I could go up and over. But somehow or another, I'm going to have to flip and do a reflection to get them to line up. So I can think about what I would do. So if I'm thinking here, I want to go, maybe I want to go ahead and flip now. So maybe I want to go across my y-axis, or one away, and we're going to be one away here. I could do that. So what I would say with this way is I reflected across the y-axis. Then from there, maybe I do a translation. I'm going to go over one, two. Well, I know that's translating. And I'm going to do an algebraic. I did x plus two. 
and then I'm going to do go up y, 1, 2, y plus 2. And that could get me there. Now that's not the only way. I could, let's start here again. What if I rotated? Let's see. If I go 90, 180, mm, let's go 270. Maybe I did 270. Then maybe I translated up. One, two, three. Then maybe I spin around the point zero two by 90 degrees. Then maybe I translate again. One, two, three, moving three for the X. And then maybe I reflect across line here where X is three and flip. So there's multiple ways to get where I need to go. I could have taken here and translated first. Maybe I translate up and then over, which we know we do over first, and then I reflect from there. So there's multiple ways to get there, but the point is you have to be very particular about your sequence. This would be step one. Step two, if I get out of step, then I'm not going to have the right outcome. It's just like directions when you drive somewhere. If you tell someone to turn left and they were really supposed to turn right, they're not going to end up in the place they needed to be. So you're going to take and finish 4 through 8. If you look at 4, you're taking a quadrilateral, ABC, and you're drawing the ABC after each transformation. So the first one, you're translating. The translation takes B to D. That means B is going to go where D is. So again, you can use your patty paper. So if you start, we'll do the first little piece together. You start, you trace your piece. Try to be as precise as possible. B, C, A, D. And I want to take this point and I want to go over where B is going to D. So what would I do to do that? I can literally slide over and then I'm going to draw that shape again. So I would draw it. You can press down hard. It'll show up on your paper and draw that shape. So we're taking... B now corresponds where D was. And you can do it on your paper. Okay, so now this is a B prime, A prime, C prime, and D prime. Now our second piece we're going to take and think about, we're taking the same beginning image. Now it's not very specific on if it wants you to take it from the pre-image each time, but we're going to take it from the pre-image each time to kind of help you make sense of it. So the second piece we're going to reflect over segment BC. So I've already drawn a little line here and we'll highlight it. This is segment BC and I'm going to extend it out a little bit so we can kind of see and we're going to go we're going to reflect it over that. So we're going to start again with our original, and we're going to reflect it over that line. So that is going to be, think about this little line extending, it's going to be a reflection, so like a mirror image, over that line. And it's right on that line, so it shares. Now again, you can go over it really hard, and yes, it's going to go into your writing. It's okay. And you can then connect and make your shape. Now, since we've already have A prime, B prime, C prime, we're going to go ahead and call this one uh, double prime since it's our second move. Okay, so we're going to call, we know when it would flip over, this would be C prime prime, B prime prime, A prime prime, and D prime prime. All right, and then the final one says rotate about point A by angle DAB. Well, D, A, B is here, and we're going around this point here. This is our angle. So we're going to start again at the beginning, and we're going to use our pencil for that mark. We don't know how many degrees that is, but we know we can kind of move it that same amount. So it's kind of like when this point gets to the edge. So kind of like think about snapping it in place. So we can get it here, and that's exactly how much we've turned. 
So we can then put our new figure here. Trace over. Your points. And so when we rotated, and this is our third move, so we're going to do triple prime here. Our A is still in the same spot. It's A triple prime. D, triple prime, and C, triple prime, along with B, triple prime. So you can have really cool, and this is how some of the cool little designs are made um, for geometry and tessellations and things of that nature. Now, the final page that you're going to finish um, is 5 through 8, and you'll see there's a couple of different things to do. These sequence ones, you could have something that looks very different from someone else's. Um, use your patty paper if you need to. Um, Use your rules. The very beginning, you are going to have to write to explain um, some communication needs. And if you need additional help, please ask.